Hello, my name's Nigel Thorne, and I am concerned about the influence of late transitioning heterosexual males on Welsh government policy. In a speech for Pride Month in 2023, Mark Drakeford restated the Welsh government's commitment to make Wales the most LGBTQ plus friendly nation in Europe. That commitment would be implemented using the LGBTQ plus action plan, the plan that is underpinned by gender identity ideology. Well, my Vlain TV Calbordam and Pride Cymru today. When we said in 2021 that we wanted to make Wales the most LGBTQ plus friendly place in Europe, that is what we meant. And the action plan that our Welsh Labour government published earlier this year is a powerful statement of our determination to secure the open and equal Wales that we all want to see. Our ambition is to use every lever we have available to guarantee that stigma and discrimination have no place in Wales by strengthening human rights, by banning conversion therapy, by removing the barriers which prevent LGBTQ plus people from being able to live freely and without abuse. That plan is being implemented right now. It reflects the enormous effort which has got our nation to this point. And I want to pay tribute to every person who has been part of that journey to today. From the pioneers of LGBTQ plus liberation to the thousands of nameless women, men, trans and non-binary people. All those who have taken up the struggle for equality in a thousand forgotten ways. Because that struggle has been a long one. And we know that it is not yet over. One high-profile individual who was featured in the speech was Kate Hutchinson, a trans-identified male who transitioned in 2012. Hutchinson is the trans officer and trustee for Pride Cymru, trustee for Schools Out UK and an education manager for Diversity Role Models, an anti-bullying charity. He's also a member of the highly influential Welsh Government Independent LGBTQ Plus Expert Panel and came third on the Wales Online 2023 pink list of the most influential LGBTQ Plus people in Wales. The write-up described as anti-trans, those lesbian protesters at the 2022 Pride March who marched with banners stating that lesbians don't like penises. Hutchinson is highly censorious. A Women's Place UK is a group formed in 2017 to ensure women's voices would be heard in the consultation on proposals to change the Gender Recognition Act. In April 2018, the group were due to attend a meeting booked at the Mercur Hotel in Cardiff. Under political pressure from activists, the hotel cancelled the meeting and issued a tweet condemning bigotry. An alternative venue was arranged. The hotel's tweet was deleted soon after. A protest against the meeting taking place took place outside Cardiff Museum. Lou Thomas, chair of Pride Cymru and chair of the Welsh Government Independent LGBTQ plus expert panel, stated, We are seeing an increase in prejudice against the trans community. You just have to put the word turf into social media to see it. Hutchinson, quote, tweeted the Mercury Hotel's tweet. Lovely to see this response. Thank you, Mercur Hotel, for not allowing this bigotry in your hotel. Hutchinson believes that he is literally a woman. In December 2019, Maya Forstatter, a researcher who lost her job at a think tank after tweeting that transgender women cannot change their biological sex, lost a legal case. Judge James Taylor, an employment judge, ruled that Mayor Forstatter's views did not have the protected characteristic of philosophical belief. She was accused of using offensive and exclusionary language in tweets opposing government proposals to reform the Gender Recognition Act to allow people to self-ID as the opposite sex. In response to the ruling, Forstatter said, 
I struggle to express the shock and disbelief I feel at reading this judgment, which I think will be shared by the vast majority of people who are familiar with my case. My belief is that sex is a biological fact and is immutable. There are two sexes, male and female. Men and boys are male, women and girls are female. It's impossible to change sex. These were, until very recently, understood as basic facts of life by almost everyone. This judgment removes women's rights and the right to freedom of belief and speech. It gives judicial license for women and men who speak up for objective truth and clear debate to be subject to aggression, bullying, no platforming and economic punishment. I'll consider the judgment closely with my legal team to determine what can be done to challenge it. On December the 19th, a day after the judgment was published, J.K. Rowling tweeted... Dress however you please, call yourself whatever you like, sleep with any consenting adult who have you, live your best life in peace and security, but force women out of their jobs for stating that sex is real? I stand with Maya. This is not a drill. On December the 20th, Kate Hutchinson tweeted, After a transphobic tweet, J.K. Rowling could no longer be considered an LGBTQ ally. On the same day, Hutchinson tweeted, No magical spell is going to protect J.K. Rowling from the transphobic blowback this time. This linked to an article in Pink News written by Veronica Ivey, formerly known as Rachel McKinnon, a transgender rights activist. McKinnon lived unambiguously as a man, called Reese until the age of 29. In addition to male puberty, he has had a full experience of modern academia, where he developed a particular enthusiasm for the philosophy of lies and for gender studies. Graduating first from the University of Victoria in British Columbia, he completed a PhD from the University of Waterloo with a thesis on assertions titled Why You Don't Need to Know What You're Talking About. McKinnon also authored a paper titled Sure, the Emperor Has No Clothes, But You Shouldn't Say That. After transitioning... McKinnon had a successful career as a woman cyclist. In March 2019, McKinnon tweeted that those women who objected to biological males competing in in women's sports should die in a grease fire. In response to the tragic death in September 2019 of Magdalene Burns, a lesbian activist who campaigned for the rights of women and same-sex attracted lesbians, McKinnon tweeted a gif of a skeleton dancing on a grave. McKinnon has encouraged young people who think they're trans to reject an unsupportive family and reach out to their glitter family. A word to the kids, the trans kids, whose parents maybe don't support them as much as we would hope. Unfortunately, this is too common. I want to give you some hope, though. I want you to know that it's okay to walk away from unsupportive or disrespectful or even abusive parents. And I want to give you hope that you can find what we call your glitter family, your queer family. We are out there. And the relationships that we make in our glitter families are just as real just as meaningful as our blood families. Also, you can reach out to me. You can email me. You can call me. We can Skype. I'm happy to talk if you need someone to talk to. In January 2021, it was reported that the partner of Rachel McKinnon, also known as Veronica Ivey, was arrested for soliciting sex and sending an explicit image to someone he believed to be a minor. Standing for Women is an organisation set up by Kelly J. Keane, otherwise known as Posey Parker. Kelly organises Let Women Speak events where women are encouraged to talk about their concerns related to this gender identity ideology. An event in Auckland, New Zealand in March 2023 had to be cancelled after Keane was assaulted and her safety threatened.
In response, Hutchinson tweeted a laughing emoji. In June 2023, a debate was held in Parliament in response to two petitions. One organised by Sex Matters, a lobby group established by Maya Forstater, argued for a change to the Equality Act to ensure that the word sex related to biological sex and not legal sex as defined in the Gender Recognition Act of 2004. A counter-petition argued that the change should not take place. Labour MP for the Gala, Tonya Antoniazzi, opening the debate, said, When we are reconciling the needs and interests of everyone impacted by the Equality Act, we must agree on a set of shared facts so we can have the reasoned and informed debate our constituents want us to have. Hutchinson was less than impressed. He retweeted a comment from Helen Islam, also known as Minimum. What the fuck are these ignorant MPs spouting off about in Parliament about trans people using a debate about the Equality Act as free licence to vomit a load of irrelevant transphobic nonsense? A few years previously, Islan had created a legal first. Islan has a transgender child and, at that time, she worked for mermaids. She was the first claimant in a transgender hate crime prosecution brought against bizarrely, trans woman Miranda Yardley. Islan claimed that Yardley had outed her child as trans. After it was pointed out that Islan had outed her child herself, the judge threw out the case and awarded costs to the defendant. Essex police said, we take all reports of hate crime incidents seriously. Yardley had previously criticised the dogmatic stance taken by Stonewall, pointing out that the assertion that trans women are women, now parroted by the Welsh Government, is ideological dogma and an obstacle to any reasoned debate. In 2016, in response to a tweet that stated trans women are not actual women and therefore do not belong in women's prison, Hutchinson tweeted, We have a turf troll alert. Please feel free to join the conversation. In July 2023, trans-identified male and ex-convict Sarah Jane Baker spoke at London Trans Pride. The event was endorsed by the Mayor of London and policed by the Metropolitan Police. Baker was on licence after spending nearly 30 years in prison for attempted murder, kidnap and torture. Baker had previously attended a Trans Pride march in 2021, where he was photographed with a placard saying, Be trans, do crime, in red paint. Part of a series carried at the march, which included the slogan Sex Work is Work, Dykes for Trans Rights, and Kill J.K. Rowling. In a well-received speech, Baker stated, I was going to come here and be really fluffy and be really nice and say, yeah, be really lovely and queer and gay. No, if you see a turf, punch him in the fucking face! A London Trans Pride spokesman said, Sarah and many others in our community hold a lot of rage and anger, and they have the right to express that anger through their words. The Metropolitan Police initially did not believe it was proportionate to take any action, as this was freedom of expression, and turf is not a protected characteristic under the Equality Act. In July 2023, the Pink News Welsh Summer Parliamentary Reception was held in the Senate. The event was sponsored by Plaid Cymru member Seanad Williams and attendees included Jeremy Miles, Lisa Power and Kate Hutchinson. Seanad Williams claimed that there are worrying trends happening. That there are worrying trends happening. There is worrying discourse. In June 2020, J.K. Rowling posted a tweet mocking the erasure of the word woman. In response, from June 7th to June the 12th, Pink News published 40 articles on J.K. Rowling, 37 of which had her name in the headline. Their reporters pretended they were fed up of writing about her. By September, the hashtag RIP J.K. Rowling was trending 
on Twitter. We're here today to talk about JK Rowling and the campaign of hatred towards her by trans rights activists, celebrities and others who seem to have fallen victim to a smear campaign against her. In our previous videos we've shown how violent and abusive threats are being made to the author online on a regular basis, with death threats, threats of violence and rape and other abuse being directed at Rowling. So how have we reached a point where the hashtag RIP JK Rowling can trend on Twitter across Europe and the USA with very little pushback or condemnation from the media, pro-gender ideology celebrities or MPs? Well it seems the answer is pretty clear and falls squarely on the shoulders of the trans activist website Pink News. In the run-up to the publication of her new book Trouble Blood, written under the pen name of Robert Galbraith, Pink News ran a story entitled JK Rowling's latest book is about a murderous cis man who dresses as a woman to kill his victims. Their article was based on a review in the Telegraph that mentioned the transvestite link. The Pink News article was widely shared by trans rights activists and supporters of the gender ideology, including many celebrities and online commentators. However, it was a lie, and made the fact that Pink News had not actually read the book pretty obvious. Trouble Blood contains no transvestite or transgender characters, and only one sentence in the entire 900 page novel makes any mention of cross-dressing, with a reference to the killer wearing a woman's coat. This doesn't seem to make the character a cross-dresser, or what may be called a transvestite by some. It also doesn't make them transgender, as even though Stonewall and other trans activist organisations include cross-dressers under the trans umbrella, we think even they might reject the idea that a man wearing a woman's coat once would be considered transgender, fictional or not. Writing in The Spectator, The Guardian journalist Nick Cohen posted a very detailed review of the novel, which completely dispels the idea that the book is in any way transphobic, saying, No honest person who takes the trouble to read it can see the novel as transphobic, but then honest people are hard to find in a culture war. But still, the accusations created by Pink News and fostered by trans rights activists was enough to smear the book and drive more online abuse directed at JK Rowling, including calls to burn her books, a dangerous act of censorship supported by Jedward of all people, who Pink News then defended. JK Rowling was initially deemed a target for trans rights activists following her public support for Maya Forstetter, the tax expert who was fired from her job for writing about gender self-ID and speaking out about gender ideology. Abuse towards Rowling increased massively following a very sensitively written essay in which she stated that she believed biological sex to be a real thing, that trans people need and deserve protection, and that she felt nothing but empathy and solidarity with trans women who've been abused by men. Rowling also went on to talk about her experiences of domestic violence and attacks she and other women have faced online from trans rights activists as well as stating her support for anyone suffering from gender dysphoria who has transitioned or may transition. Following her essay, Pink News launched what can only be described as a full-scale campaign against Rowling, publishing dozens of pieces of content deriding, condemning and pretty much bullying JK Rowling in what appears to be a pretty venomous attempt to smear her as anti-trans, dangerous and transphobic, as clear a case of bigoteering as you will ever find. In our view, Pink News are sailing very close to, if not fully breaching, libel laws in the UK, and such a volume of articles directed at Rowling could be seen as tantamount to harassment. They have created articles about or referenced JK Rowling over 350 times on their website, yet at no point have they outlined why they believe JK Rowling's comments are transphobic. As we pointed out in our gender ideology video, this is how trans rights activists conduct their campaigns, not relying on any strong evidence, but twisting the facts to suit their narrative and push forward their agenda. They don't seem to be too concerned about libel laws and spread sensationalist headlines and stories based on very little evidence, which have real world implications. In this case, however, it seems to have backfired on Pink News and other trans rights activists, as the novel has reached number one on the bestseller lists along with previous instalments in the series. In some ways, JK Rowling could not have asked for a better PR campaign.
Now that the truth of the matter appears to be public knowledge, it will be interesting to see which celebrities and commentators will apologise for joining in on this smear campaign and sharing what most people would consider fake news, and who will simply ignore this or even double down on their position rather than be seen to backtrack. We'll watch to see what happens. In June 2023, it was reported that the Prime Minister would be instructing the Education Secretary to issue guidance that would prevent teachers socially affirming children without parental consent. Following the guidance issued in the Interim CAS report, it was stated that letting girls identify as boys and boys identify as girls could have a significant impact on the child. In response, Lisa Cordroy Bruce, human rights advocate, nurse, Pride Cymru trustee and member of the Welsh Government Independent LGBTQ Plus expert panel tweeted, This is awful and a complete violation of children's rights. This will harm children and be a real suicide risk. This is Dickensian in its treatment of young human beings. Thank God for Welsh Labour. Preve Wainy Dog and Hannah Bluthin. Hutchinson retweeted that tweet. Medical professionals reject the claim that there is a link between a refusal to affirm a child's gender identity and an increased risk of suicide. The false doctrine that we're being led to believe is that they're safe they're reversible, they'll put a harmless pause on puberty while the child has thinking time, who can then decide what they want to do with their gender. False. The other false narrative is if you don't give a gender-confused child puberty blockers, they're a high risk of suicide. False. No evidence for that. It's, it's repeated again and again. If you repeat something again and again, it almost becomes like fact because you've heard it so many times. It's not fact. There's no evidence. In May 2023, Pride in Education, a biannual LGBTQ plus education conference, announced a conference with a workshop from Kate Hutchinson looking at trans and non-binary inclusion in Welsh education. Hutchinson was described as an advisor to the Welsh Government. Traditionally, there has been an understanding that there is more than one cause to gender dysphoria, and a recognition that gender dysphoria experienced in adults is different to that experienced in children. In the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual version 4, it is reported that males with gender identity disorder who are sexually attracted to males tend to present in adolescence or early adulthood with a lifelong history of gender dysphoria. In contrast, those who are sexually attracted to females, to both males and females, or to neither sex, tend to present later and typically have a history of transvestic fetishism. Hutchinson is a later transitioning heterosexual male. The question that should be asked, is it wise to regard late transitioned heterosexual males as a source of authority on child transition? Is there a danger that Hutchinson is pushing the subjective rationalisation of his own experiences as objective truth to children and the Welsh Government as a whole? During the Pink News reception, Education Minister Jeremy Miles stated that the Cabinet were committed to the LGBTQ plus action plan a plan that is driven by gender identity ideology and commits to self-ID, a trans conversion therapy ban and the teaching of gender identity in schools. Whenever we have cabinet discussions about the LGBTQ plus action plan, you know, everyone is supportive, everyone's on board, everyone's looking for ways of making a difference. And I think that is the real thing. Many women have concerns. In May 2023, Conservative member Laura Ann Jones raised concerns about the plan in the Senate chamber. It pains me to have to keep asking you something that is clearly a priority of yours and your government's, but it is not a priority of the people of Wales when we have a 
a failing NHS, with a failing NHS, educational outcomes that you cannot be proud of, and a housing crisis. But the impact of what you're focusing on has such a significant impact on half the population of Wales. I have to ask you, First Minister, I know it's hard to keep up with the amount of flip-flopping Sir Keir Starmer does, but which statement from your UK Labour leader do you agree with? Do you agree that biological men can be women and therefore enter vulnerable women-only spaces, changing rooms and participate in women-only sports? Or do you agree with his statement that biological women and girls' rights should not be rolled back and therefore you'll be rewriting your LGBTQ plan, action plan, dropping your gender reform, recognition reform plan, so constructing fact-based sex education in our schools to reflect that? Uh, so with, I'm simply not going to get drawn into the shrill and deliberately divisive debate that the member continuously attempts to raise on the floor of this Senate. Uh, did she not see that her party lost over a thousand seats uh, in elections in England last week? I don't think it's wise of her to come here telling me that my party doesn't understand the priorities of people in Wales. Your party absolutely has lost any credibility it may ever have had on that basis. Uh, and the member and people like her spent the whole of April trying to raise these dog whistle concerns and found, as I would have been confident all along, that people out there have a much greater sense of decency than the Conservative Party ever attributes to them. They are not interested in attacks on trans people. They are not interested in attacks on black people. They are not interested in attacks on asylum seekers. Exactly the sort of agenda that the member herself pursues and her party pursues. Sean Ed Williams was not impressed. I would like to see more cases, more examples being made of politicians who are making those kind of statements for completely political, electoral reasons, just to whip up hate, basically. Um, just dog whistles, as Jeremy Miles said earlier today. I don't believe that those politicians actually often really believe what they're doing. I really think it's calculated and they're being told by the people who want their parties to gain power um, and, and, and appeal to certain parts of the electorate. Um, I think they're being instructed to push out this lazy, hateful ideology. In April 2023, a silent protest by women's groups was made in St David's Cathedral while Mark Drake Ford was speaking. Mary Douglas, who was one of the protest's organisers, said the demonstrators had no other option. We were driven to protest during the First Minister's speech because we've exhausted all of the ways of raising our concerns with his government. For years, he and his ministers have refused to acknowledge the conflicts of rights and risk to women and girls arising from the government adopting gender identity ideology. We have been reaching out to our Senate representatives for years, raising concerns about safeguarding, single-sex spaces and other issues arising from gender ideology. Of what I think sums up what a citizen, what it is to be a citizen of Wales. Then I think God put a program, a program in which we are able to support young <laughs> As part of his inclusion agenda, this seems to be how Mark Drakeford would like women who hold concerns to behave. By not speaking, 